Hello and welcome, this is Rufamonger, and in this edition of Let's Learn Dragon Ball Fighters, I want to talk about the concept of stealing the corner. So, the corner. You don't want to be there. It sucks. You're back, hey, very literally against the wall, right? And while it's, um, you know, not a good place to be, you can still be hit by overheads, you can still be hit by lows. The one thing that it affords you defensively is you don't really have to worry about left rights. So in the corner, try as I might here, I'm trunks, I'm trying to instant ash over to the other side. I cannot hit Goku on the other side. I can only give him highs and lows, but no left and right mix-ups, right? Mid-screen, well, hey, you can do everything. So I can go, hey, should have blocked right, hey, should have blocked left, right? So I can do everything mid-screen just fine, but in the corner, not so much. But there are ways to force a left-right mix-up in the corner, and that's what this video is about. So first, let's show you a couple classic examples here. We have Yamcha and Majin Buu, and both their examples will be in Sparking Blast. So for both these characters here, they have a string. Well, it brings the enemy in closer than usual. So for Yamcha, it's just light, light. Now you might notice here in slow-mo, that Goku kind of gets vacuumed in just a little bit, right? And that very much applies to the corner. Now for Majin Buu, for Majin Buu, it's whatever you do into down and medium. The vacuum effect here is a little more pronounced, as you can see here. Now, normally, in and of themselves, well, that's about it, right? Um, you know, if I go like light, light, down, medium, well, I gotta wait for Block Sun to be over to go on the other side, right? However, in Sparking Blast, that's no longer a factor because you're allowed to jump cancel everything, right? So let's show how these examples work in the corner. So in Sparking Blast for Yamcha, light, light. And now that little suction that we got from that string, we can just jump and hey, we're in the corner. So now we can go for a basically instant mix up like this. So something like that, right? And Majin Buu much the same. As you can see, sort of works on the same principle. My opinion, even a little bit better than Yamcha's. Now, you might ask, well, what if they down heavy during that? And, you know, that's a good question to ask because if they down heavy, you're gonna get clocked. However, uh, due to the situation and just how it works, the down heavy is more predictive rather than reactive because if you wait too long and you react to the cross-up, well, then you're probably too late and you won't get those invulnerability frames and you might just get clocked on the head. So in a case where it gets predictive rather than reactive, all you can do is just delay the next button. And if they try to vanish out, down heavy, whatever, anything short of something that's truly invincible like a level 3, you'll just crank them in the head and that's all there is to it, right? So yes, while if the enemy knows what you're up to that can be predicted, uh, you can easily just change up your game plan just a little bit and go from there. Now, let's show a couple character examples here. Then uh, Let's start with Kid Buu. Now, Kid Buu used to have one of the most terrifying versions of this concept in the game until it got nerfed. Uh, but the base concept still works. So, down and medium, it, as you can see, just drags the opponent to you. We're like wildly out of the corner now. So, it still has this property. It had it before. Before, the old mix was just really as basic as like this and the pinwheel. And you immediately had to guess, you know, okay, is he going to do this into Delay Stand M or this in the pinwheel? And you basically had to bet your life on the correct guess, right? He can't do that anymore, but he can still steal the corner. So something like this, just, you know, basic block string. And from there, hey, we can homing dash. He's pulled out of the corner. We can dash over their heads and cross them up on the other side. Now, ideally, you're going to be using an assist with this, preferably a low block stun assist, say something like Tan or something, just so you can cover uh, the airspace time for the homing dash so they can't, you know, just automatically crank down heavy and get you. So just something like that, you know, just so the assist isn't long enough so you can't get the left-right mix-up. Because if uh, you're an assist block stun, you can't do left-right mix-ups, only high-low. But yeah, it's just a way to cover yourself. Also, certain other assists can work as well in a different way. Instead of covering the homing dash, you can instead cover your initial offense and the assist can hold them in place. Another example there, just uh, pulling the opponent out of the corner here. 
using the Gotenks assist to keep him in place, and then from there, homing dash, steal the corner, all that kind of stuff, and it leaves enough room for them to take an action, so it becomes a left-right mix-up. And of course, you know, if you wanted to, you could just, at that point, once they're pulled out of the corner, you can go for a traditional IAD as well. It's really up to you, just to show you how versatile it is. And of course, one of the main ideas here is, no, you don't have to immediately follow up with a dash in the corner, right? You can just like let him rock and then go for like a jump medium or something. So that in essence creates like a left right uh, mix up once the corner steal is established. And for Kid Boo, just like Yamcha, just like Majin Boo, he can totally do it himself, you know, uh, if he isn't sparking, but he can also do it without sparking. He doesn't need it to do it. How about another classic example here with Piccolo and the orbs? So basically, a delay orb, and it's a very tiny delay, will always take the enemy out of the corner when they block, and this is generally used after you've knocked them down, so just a quick example here. Alright, now a tiny delay on the orb, and when you know it, they're just ripped right out of the corner. You don't even really need to think about it. Gaps there and it's a big one. Now here's where it becomes valuable. So hey, this is really easy to set up and a lot of people know about this. This is not an uncommon setup at all, right? A lot of people know. So people will be expecting for you to steal the corner and bonk them on the other side, right? Now I didn't mention you delay the orb. Now what happens if you don't delay it? Well, if you do it as fast as possible on the knockdown here, it does nothing. You can't be taken out of the corner. That's all there is to it, right? So basically, which frame of animation you enter your input on can determine if it's going to take them out of the corner or not, right? So it's uh, very difficult for someone to assess what's happening in the split second time. You know easily because you're the one inputting and uh, it's easy to know if you're going to input it to uh, have it take people out of the corner or not. But for the opponent, the timing can be imperceptible. So it can be very difficult for them to guess. So they have to guess once you just instant air dash over, okay, am I going to be going left or am I going to be going right? And of course, say they're getting sassy and they're going to try to vanish or down heavy or something like that. You can just also just charge and hit buttons, right? So you can easily knock them out of stuff like that as well. So once again, your basic concept for Piccolo, it's been around a long time, but you know what? an oldie and a goodie and once again right there that timing was fast as possible so didn't take him out of the corner we want to switch it up again this time we will take him out of the corner it's literally up to you you choose the timing and that's what makes this mix so good and of course if you want to use any amount of assists or whatever to just you know add visual noise add to the confusion all the better yet it's a setup you know hey Reflect kind of ruins the orb. It always has, but you know that's the risk you get a run. If you want to delay wake up, well, hey, the orb doesn't care about delay wake up because it'll be sitting on you waiting for you to get up, right? So delay wake up not as strong gets a set up like this. Now on top of a lot of character specific stuff here, there are ways that assists can create gaps in the corner that normally shouldn't be possible. So right now, an example here, we're going to be using Z Broly and the TNC assist. And the TNC assist is going to interact with Broly's level 3 super in a fun way that open up a gap in the corner. And hey, wouldn't you know it? You got the corner, right? Now, this is something no one would ever expect for Broly of all characters to be able to steal the corner, and yet here we are, we've done it. So I could easily just, you know, instant air dash medium over their head and bonk them on the head, right? It's all about when you call the assist for uh, Broly here. So if I call him at one timing, it'll be in the corner as normal, nothing will change. And if I call him at a very specific different timing here, right between the final hit and when I call the level three, then all of a sudden it'll rip him out of the corner. So this is the kind of setup most people don't know about, unless you've seen the previous video I've done on this exact setup before. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you don't know about it, you're almost always going to get hit by the cross-up the first time. That's just how it is. Despite the fact that the assist is interfering with the level 3, it still provides the true hard knockdown. There's no teching, there's no nothing like that. It's still a true hard knockdown, you have to groove on it and you have to accept it. There's no way out other than just blocking or just doing a reflect, and in the case of the cross-up, you'd have to reflect it the other way. 
So these are just some examples here. There's so many more to go over. So, so, so many more. Uh, and there's a million I don't even know about, right? Because a lot of these are pet-specific setups here. Like, until I figured out uh, this one here for Brolin Tian, I'm sure no one else knew about it. And now you know because of the video. And I'm sure there's a lot of setups like that. I got no clue because it's up to you watching at home to figure them out. So play around with it. Just something as simple as this. When you're with a character and uh, you're in training mode, just send them the guard all and just, you know, see how they react to your hit. Uh, for characters that we've shown earlier, like Majin Buu, Yamcha, Kid Buu, sometimes they have moves that bring them in versus taking them out. And that could be the first important step to finding a way to steal the corner. For people like Piccolo, it's based on your special moves. For this specific setup, it's all about the assist, right? There's a million ways to do it, and there's a million more just waiting to be discovered. So with all that said, my friends, I guess that is the end of this video. So hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Dragon Ball.